Well, there are a variety of ventricular tachycardias uh, that can affect children. Uh, some of them have congenital heart disease, others have entirely normal hearts. These are often asymptomatic, but occasionally they need treatment. Uh, and one of the treatments that's evolved over the last 15 or 20 years is using the principles of catheter ablation to identify where in the heart the arrhythmia is coming from and to treat it either by heating or cooling the heart so that the tachycardia is eliminated. Well, over the last 30 years or so, we've gotten to be extremely proficient at treating SVT. It's an extremely gratifying uh, opportunity to treat uh, arrhythmia, which is symptomatic in children. Even though uh, it's typically not life-threatening, it can cause a lot of trouble for patients and their families. Now, there aren't very many areas in medicine where you can actually take somebody into the uh, catheterization lab and in the course of a morning or an afternoon permanently cure them of their arrhythmia. But supraventricular tachycardia is one of these diseases that we can actually treat and get rid of for good. Uh, I was asked to speak on this particular case on a particular subtype of arrhythmia, one that comes from low in the heart. Uh, and I discussed a lot of the technical and safety issues around ablating in that particular area so that people could learn how to do it more effectively and safely. Uh, the specific topics of the presentation involved some of the technical issues about ablating in this particular spot in the heart and also some of the things that we need to worry about, such as the anatomy of various structures of the heart like the coronary arteries and the, and, uh, the vein of the heart, the coronary sinus. Uh, Postoperative junctional ectopic tachycardia, or JET as we commonly refer to it in the ICU, uh, is uh, very uh, transient arrhythmia, uh, but one that can be very problematic in children who are undergoing or have recently undergone cardiac surgery. Uh, it's a difficult arrhythmia to treat and it can really significantly complicate the course postoperatively in the first one to four days after their heart surgeries. So it's been a mission of ours in our field for decades now uh, to try to find safe and effective drugs that we can use and other techniques uh, to ameliorate this type of problem, to make it uh, possible that kids can get up and out of the ICU and back to their regular lives more quickly.